everybody. My name is Karthik. I work as a product manager at Crossland. As you see there. Crossland is a fintech startup based in Berlin. We are working on building a European debt exchange that will help improve the liquidity of debt funds here in Europe. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. Before I get into the actual talk, uh, how many people here play board games? Okay. How many people here have been through or have seen an escape room? Okay, okay. That's good. That's good. How many people know or play chess? Okay. So the reason this topic even came up was our product team, we had a problem. We were not able to deliver good quality products. So I was thinking of, okay, what do we do here? Can I have a team building exercise? Can something happen? I asked my boss if there's budget. He said, no, there's no money. So we started playing board games. So before that, what is Dungeons and Dragons? It's a fantasy medieval role-playing game where it has origins in chess in this Kriegspiel, which is trained by the Prussian army back in the Prussian era. How it works is there's a game master who comes and presents a scenario. There are players who interact with this scenario. They explore the world, they learn the rules as they play. And together, they solve dilemmas, they build a story, they find things, they acquire treasure, they gain experience and become better at what they do. So we played together, we worked on it and just like a retrospective in a project team, we had a retrospective on D&D to say, why is this working so effectively for us? So that led us to comparing it to our product workflow and then deciding, you know what, we should make this a regular part of what we do. I presented my team with a scenario. There's a village, villagers are living a simple life. Somebody comes running to them and says, hey, there's a goblin in my basement. So what they did together was they asked questions of what they could do. Together they figured out, okay, do I talk to this goblin? Do I attack the goblin? Do I feed him? Do I trap him? So they asked questions and they started interacting with the world as they figured this out. They were starting to make decisions by committee where they were scared of stepping out and making a decision. So they were initially talking to each other a lot more and trying to figure out, okay, wait, what do you think? What do you think is happening? What is your perspective on what is happening? They tried things and as they did things, they learned more about the world around them. And they started sharing knowledge and ideas about, hey, you know what, I think this is what is happening. What do you think? So they were discussing what was happening around them. Together, they figured out how to solve the problem. But the second scenario, a little bit more complex. So a dragon has invaded town. It has chased everybody off from this town. It has eaten up all their food. It's occupied a very fancy looking tower in this building and has a great view of the countryside. Panic and hysteria. All the townsfolk are like going bananas. So this one had a smaller team. There was a priest, a thief, and a wizard, which is three players. So they ran into the dragon's tower. They got covered in spider webs and they got tracked. The dragon came down and attacked them. They realized they couldn't tackle this dragon head on. So they're like, ah, help. And they all ran away. So now they sit and they find a blacksmith shop in the town and they start thinking and planning, okay, what does this dragon mean? What are we supposed to do? How do we plan for this? We're obviously super ill-equipped. What can we find around here in this town that we can salvage and make use of? One of the people who is a product manager in real life said, oh, let's build a mouse trap. It's like a trap the dragon and you know, beat it up. Another guy who was a developer said, you know what, that's way too complicated. I know what you're trying to do, but let's try a simpler approach and said, let's uh, get some like a cart, let's fill it with broken like weights and build like a lasso and uh, let's trap the dragon using that. It achieves the same purpose, but it's much simpler and easier to try out. So the plan is trap the dragon and to collapse the tower on top of it and get rid of it. So they went back for a second time and they first made fun of the dragon and the dragon is <sighs> angry. So it comes running out at them, gets caught in this trap and they start beating up on it and it gets so scared that it's going to get defeated. It chews through the rope and escapes and runs away from the town. So while the players are all exhausted from ah, this is such a tough battle, but in the end, they accomplished the goal of getting rid of the dragon. What did they learn from this when they reflected? They realized that instead of just rushing into battle or trying to command people as to do this or do that, when they collaborated and worked together, they were able to achieve a much better result. When they proactively think about what they want to do, they try to assess the situation before acting. They achieved better results than if they just ran headlong into something and just trying to react to something which is being thrown on them. Also, what they realized was, if you have a plan in mind, try it out. If it fails, then try something else instead of making dynamic changes on the fly. This way, you have a better chance of understanding feedback. So, okay, I tried this. It didn't work because of X reason. Now, let's try something else. 
and what they also realized was it's not about how fast you go through what you do it's about how can you accomplish what you want what is the value that you're trying to give it's not just here's something i'm going to deliver it and you're going to go running through this having gone through the dragon scenario i placed a third scenario before them called retrieve the treasure here there's a abandoned mine somewhere and there's powerful monsters which are guarding this treasure anybody who sees it it attacks so the quest is deal with the monster and retrieve the treasure what do they do here so instead of going and fighting with the monster this is one of the players said i want to talk to the monster and find out what's up so the monster says oh by the way i'm just working here on contract uh, for the next 100 years uh, i'm just doing my job taking care of this place so he's like oh, well actually your contract expired like last year i saw the official paperwork you don't have to work here anymore he's like you can go so the monster is like oh really oh that, that's perfect like uh, thank you for letting me know and it like goes home <laughs> what they learned was if you have a blocker it doesn't mean you go and jump at it and start like beating yourself against it sometimes you have to think about take a step back and see why is this blocker even there who put it there was it for some reason like what is going on maybe there was just a, a good reason there's some good rule there's some problem that it was trying to solve and maybe that's not relevant anymore so if you take a step back and talk about what's going on maybe it's easier for you to adapt process even if somebody is preventing you from doing this maybe just understanding their point of view is going to help them come to your side last scenario so the town that they were trying to protect the mayor was corrupt and ran away with all the money and the town needs new leadership so i told them there's going to be an election process make sure the process runs smoothly what are you going to do the thief knight and the priest together had to figure out this problem the knight says you know what i have been with this town for so long we played several games together i met people in this town i want to run for mayor can i can i do that i'm like sure you, you can try how do you run for mayorship so they had to think on the fly so all the other people in the team came together like yeah this is a really good idea Let, let's let's do this so they came up with all these unique ideas of how to accomplish this problem and they rolled some dice and in the end they won the election and there was a new mayor in town now what they learned is if your team comes up with a unique way of solving a problem you should try some way to support them to try this out and this encourages ownership in them to try it and fail or to succeed but it also lets them find out okay if they can't do it who's stopping them okay can you go talk to them get permission is can you make a small team can you get a limited budget how, how do you allow them to explore and try something so that they can claim ownership over this so in the end what we realized was why should we play games together yeah it relaxes your mind it helps you reduce your stress uh, you can be in a creative environment you can experiment you can take risks you can do things you normally don't do you have games where you have to set goals you have to plan you have to manage your resources you have to see what the other person is doing you have to remember it stimulates your mind in certain ways some games are all about like like card games you have to have your memory jar then you have to make sure you remember what's going on some games are team games you play them together builds camaraderie some are competitive games where yeah it's like real life you compete against something you build your negotiation skills and in the end it's all about winning and losing but it's the thrill of the challenge even though it's a game when you win you feel like you did something that feeling is real this is why i realized that playing dnd was making such a big impact on us product development is not like any other development it is a kind of collaborative storytelling where we don't write requirements we write user stories they are supposed to give a narrative to somebody they are supposed to embellish something if i give you a pen and say this is a pen do you want to buy it you're like yeah it's a pen i don't care but if i say this is the pen that michael jackson signed his first record album song do you want to buy it and you might be more interested in because there's a story behind it now <laughs> a product life cycle is very similar to an episodic storytelling it's not like a movie it's like a tv show your pilot season is like your mvp your each individual episode is like your sprint or your individual release you have to deliver value in each sprint but you also have to make a story arc for your season and you have to renew your season have good enough stories that you are renewed season after season and maybe you have a 10 season run this is what product development is like it's not like a one shot movie product development also lets you tackle open ended problems it's not like monopoly okay aim is to buy everything on the board in dnd you can tackle very open ended things we started with help the goblin or what are get rid of the goblin to help a town with their election like what does that even mean it's super abstract the kind of problems we deal with in product are also similar abstract problems it's not about 
give me a graph that does it. It's about I'm trying to address this kind of a problem for the user. How do I do it? You can have the best team, but if they are not aligned on the product vision, if they don't want the same thing in the same way, they are not going to accomplish anything. So the idea is when you get your team talking about what they want and they agree on wanting something, it makes, makes a much more powerful team. A company is not a democracy, but that doesn't mean that everybody shouldn't get a chance to contribute to the idea of what we are supposed to be doing. When we try to collaborate on the decision making process by allowing people to give their inputs, they feel heard and they feel like maybe I have some kind of an impact on the product and a good idea can come from anywhere. So you should keep yourself as open to it as possible. If a product manager is not in the office, is on holiday, what does the team do without them? Are they able to continue working without them? Are they able to figure out what needs to be done without them? This is called a self-organizing team where each person on the team has an idea of what they want and what they think the team wants. And games like this allow each person to come up with their own individual goals as well as team goals. You can have a lot of people in your team who are extremely skilled, but if they're not talking to each other, if they're not cooperating and coordinating with each other, you cannot build anything. You build a haphazard Frankenstein monster kind of a thing, but it'll never be something that actually works. So it's more important to have people who talk to each other in your team than to have the best programmer or designer on your team. Everybody comes to a company expecting something to be growing in themselves or in the product or in the company itself. And only when you see the steady growth, in some ways you feel like you are actually making a difference. Like, yeah, I'm better than I was yesterday. My team is better than it was yesterday. My company is better than it was yesterday. People want to see this, but just because you want to give more stability, you cannot sacrifice that to doing something new, something different, something innovative. And this was the most important thing we realized. If you have a product idea, talk about it with people. People can steal it, of course, but just having an idea is of no use. Who is your team? Without a good product team, you can have the best idea and you cannot implement it. So if you invest more time in building up your product team to be a powerful team, you can even take a simple idea and make it something very powerful. But if you have a great idea and a bad team, it's very difficult to get anywhere with it. So after all our retrospecting, we realized this was the reason why playing games was good, but playing Dungeons and Dragons was bringing us much closer as a team. And then our product team started working better together. It wasn't because of the game, but it was because we started talking more with each other. We started liking each other more. And we were genuinely interested in each other. Thank you. Thank you. Did you also have some uh, bad experience for playing games? The only bad experience, I would say, which is also a good experience, was some people didn't want to play games at all. They were like, leave me alone, I'm not interested in playing games. But we later realized these are also the people who didn't like talking much in real life. So, like, all right. Okay. okay, because the reason I ask you is, we also play games at Rookfetch, and it was like, uh, werewolf, called werewolf. <laughs> and I guess we experienced that this game was not that helpful because this game is a lot about lying, so you need to be good at lying. And so I played it in different teams already, and a lot of times people started to yeah, be afraid about the game because you need to lie so much. <laughs> we were initially playing people. just board games, so for example, when we played Risk. People left this game like super enemy with each other. They're like, oh, you killed my, you took over my kingdom. Like, so they were super unhappy playing those kinds of games. But D&D is a collaborative game. You have to win together or you don't win. So this brought the team together. So it's the team against some bigger problem. So this forces you to look past your differences and figure out how to be friendly with each other and how to support each other in some way. So this made a difference with this particular game, but it doesn't work for maybe other games in the same way. You mentioned that some people don't mind swing, and I think that was on some people who wouldn't point to. And aren't, um, don't you worry that they might get a bit more isolated this way? Or like how how would you connect them into the game? I, I realize not every game was for everybody, but everybody has some game that they like. While not everyone plays Dungeons and Dragons in the office, 
my HR team has nominated me the game master. So everybody who joins the company has to spend at least two hours playing games with me during their onboarding. <laughs> <laughs> they can choose what they want to play. So some play Lego series play with me, some play board games with me, some play ping pong with me. People prefer different games, so it's just about finding what they like. And they want me to organize like ping pong tournaments and so on. So yeah. I, like, this is not my job, like my job is actually <laughs> <laughs> I'm so furious with like, finance stuff, but what I realized was the real world is very messy and complicated and it's very difficult to talk to people or to do things or to plan things but a game is very structured, right? It's very organized. There's a clear goal, there's a clear way of doing something, there's clear ways of talking to people and interacting with people and in the modern age, the games we play need to adapt in order to better help us deal with challenges that we face in the modern age. Games which involve social interaction or thinking or planning, these are more interesting and prepare us much better for facing the modern world. So I wish I had played all this when I was young, but I didn't. It was maybe in the last couple of years that I kind of rediscovered this passion and I was like, oh, this is actually, I wish this was a part of my childhood, but now I get to do this now. My wife is pregnant, so everybody's like, oh, I don't play games with the kids like this. <laughs> they don't play board games all the time, so I, I hope so. Yeah, great.